live guitar practice number 20. We're working on Blackbird, Blackbird Saturday night, kind of late, so bear with me. I might be having a beer or two. Founder Centennial. Um, this is first look, and this is the correct way to play it. And actually linked below, um, The Art of Guitar. He did a really good breakdown. Uh, pulled up some uh, videos of Paul McCartney playing it live and past and present. I mean, they're all past because they're videos, but I just did a really good job of breaking it down, and that's the kind of the correct way to play it. Now, John, who writes all of our sheet music, wrote out this tab. If you guys would like to purchase this or become a member at musicbythemeasurespro.com, that's very helpful to us. Helps us write more tabs and uh, more sheet music for you guys. Nine ninety nine gets you ten pieces of lead guitar sheet music a month and gives us a, I don't know, gives us a push and a reason to create videos like this. And these videos help me practice, and I hope they help you as guys as well. So, like I said, uh, the art of guitar link is below. He does a great job of breaking this video or breaking down the style that Paul McCartney uses. I'm gonna slaughter a little bit of what he told in the video just to get the idea of it down. And, and I'll have to relearn some habits because I've taught this song many times uh, before, but with a simplified tab that was missing co quite a bit of the detail. And one thing that I am very impressed with John always is just the amount of detail that he puts in our sheet music. It really kind of puts all the nuances in it that uh, a lot of other places miss. So uh, supposedly, and I, I don't know how what is the truth of this, but Paul McCartney isn't a great finger style guitarist or... And this song, he's not. And The Art of the Guitar kind of said it that way, too. So I'm stealing from him, and and uh, he explained it much better than I. and Didn't stumble as much on his words as I am. But but uh, really, kind of some of the basics that he talked about was he's only using these two fingers. And yeah, let me move that microphone just a little bit. So anytime that you see, and we'll kind of break this down, I don't know, slowly, because I got to reteach myself because I've been playing it wrong for so many years. Um, when these two notes are together, he's using these two fingers. He's doing this kind of plucked thing. And I might have to just move a little bit. Now, when he is uh, playing these double notes, so this G and D string right here, if I can find my pointer, he's kind of like making his finger into a little bit of pick. Hey, bro, Aaron, great, great feedback on this guitar. I love this guitar. Uh, what you don't see, now you can kind of see it in the light, this very big crack that I put into it quite a few years ago, but I got a good repair job on it. So, But I do love this guitar, and I think it gives it a little bit of character. Um, so the thing that's going to be hard for me is he's only using these two fingers, and he's really using this as a strum. So any, And I think of it as his downbeat, like one and... Well, you might say that's not a downbeat, but in this song, context-wise, it is. The 16th note up strums. I think he does, like, a pickup. We'll, we'll just have to, like, kind of go through this slowly and, 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 and break it down. And you kind of see I'm struggling just a little bit. Um, might be on more than my first beer. Uh, but it really is this motion of the strum. turn a bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then the next chord, that A minor. And I'm going to say everything that I'm going to do is going to be an approximation. Like, uh, John does such a good job of hearing, like, hey, he, he hit this this G string on this note. Well, I'm, I may not get the G string. Or, like, over here he says the B and the G. I'm going to get really, really close. We're going to, you know... Note for note may not happen, but it's the style that I'm really interested in more than anything else. And I'll do more videos on this and hopefully change my camera angle down the road. So you can really see. But this first look should be rough. Kind of getting the idea of it. Hopefully breaking some old habits. All right, I'm going to quit talking and get this done. What I do find funny, now that I've said I'm not going to talk, it's tough to not, it's tough to get this finger to be loose. All right, let's do that at 54. Uh, full speed, I think, is 94. I'm just going to see if I can do this.
and two and three and, and only these two fingers. So that's not bad. can do that. Now, when he hits this, right, so he's plucking, strum, gonna call that a strum, slide. So one and two and three and slide. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. So I would say this is a pluck, and I'm, I'm kind of really taking it enda. So he's going one and da. turning my first finger into a pick. One and a two E and. Uh, so I'm gonna, on that 10, I'm just gonna keep pointing to where I'm at. This 10, zero, zero, 12. I'm gonna go down, or down. This is gonna take me a while to learn how to speak this language. Thumb, up, down, thumb, up, down. like three practices of this I'm probably gonna learn this technique pretty quickly and, and same thing for you uh, supposedly an art of guitar again does a better breakdown than I am gonna quit saying that um, supposedly it's a sloppy way to play so there's a reason you know it might not be that hard to play pick up now it may be sloppy but it is totally the sound of the song or maybe uh, better than saying sloppy it's just uh, a simplified technique but you can kind of see with what's going on it doesn't make it easy to play it's it's actually pretty hard so one and uh, two e and three okay we're not even gonna worry about that full measure let's just get one and uh, two e and and 54 might be too fast for me 54 is too fast for me so we're gonna slide slow this down to 44 too fast for me so what I do know thumb and the thumb and the let's move that just a little bit more you can hear I'm not great at that end up Here, forty four again. Two E and one in the two E and one. One in the down, up, down, down. Now, this is where I'm saying I might not be that picky about. Hear that there's a little bit of that second string in there. I don't really care. As I get tighter with that understanding of that rhythm, not rhythm, technique. When I get better at this technique, it'll be easier for me. Okay. One and a two E end. Now when I see Paul do it though, it's more it's more free flowing. I'm kind of very much directing it. There's like this microphone that's not exactly where I want it to be. So the big lessons are, anytime you see two notes together, it's going to be a pluck. Um, and 
then I feel like anything that's an end or a number, like one, two, three, four, is going to be a down strum. And you, get, you hear that little bit of a fingernail in there. And then anything that's an E or an U uh is going to get up. So those are the rules in my mind. That's the idea there. So three would be three and a four E and three and a four. Yep, four E. So that four uh, thumb up down, thumb up down. So three and a four E and. Already starting to groove a little bit more. whole thing is in this measure. Let's not worry about more. So we got one and a two E and three and a four E and I got an extra note in there. Again, not gonna be too picky about it. You can see the slight differences between this measure and the second measure of the verse. Verse. Maybe there's a difference. We can now. Uh, yeah, there's one difference. He hits that 12. So like I said, just small little nuances. Again, try my best at getting everything. As I get more comfortable, this finger is going to be like, especially when we get up to tempo, it's going to be more free form. You kind of hear it already. It does really change your perspective of the song. I've spent many years playing it. Now, go listen to the actual recording and you're going to hear more. And I don't know if sloppy is the right word, just nuanced extra notes one and a two e and three and a four e and all right so let's do those two one thing that's going to get me every time is that slide one and two and three and four one again sorry one and two and three and one and a two e and three and a four e and try my best so do both measures, slow. Thank you. 
So not perfect with the pick idea, but good enough. Okay. So let's just start breaking this down. Uh, verse one, doing the same thing in the beginning. So that's what I said uh, he's doing. try to do the notes how they're written every once in a while I might vary just a little bit like that's hard for me to do three and uh, four E and I want to play three and uh, four E and so I might as we get up to tempo play a little bit of variation of that just feels like I'm out in space. I know like the grounding of the pinky or even just my third finger too because he's not doing anything else. Feels better without metronome. One in the two E and three in the four E and some amalgamation of that. Alright, we're just gonna keep moving. So um so three zero five kind of wonder if he'd play one and two. He'd probably play the right notes. I'm just going to treat that as a downstream. One and two and three. What did I make a mistake on? Oh, three, five is where it starts. One. So I think all those zero fives is just a strum like that. And that zero by itself is a strum as well. So we got three, five. I'm just going to work on these chord movements because you can see that I'm not doing good at them. Three, five, four, three, five, seven, six, five. And you hear me getting those extra notes. Okay, we can live with that. All right, let's put that on a loop. That's going to be a little rough, but. It's nice and slow with just eighth notes. One and already bad. Four and one and two and three. Okay, let's do that by ourselves then.
funny, right? Because you can hear the... That one I have to like kind of drag my first finger to get both. And then play a little sloppy, like a little bit more with that pick. And that one I have to clean up because it's only the third. some really ugly notes in there but right like nothing sounds perfect but yes and no okay we're just gonna keep moving on let's just try to get this first verse down maybe we'll do the chorus too all right so we're at a seven eight So I'm going, again, I'm kind of doing that. Yeah, because that's the only really way that I would approach it is just kind of pinching those all together and then turning his finger into a pick. Now on that. technique down that's what you do just repeat over and over again nice and slow that mute is just happening because my finger happens to be draping over that other string so we got this and again it starts the idea starts coming to you right so on three it's three down up thumb up Do that whole measure. Two e and three in the four. So here are the chords. Two e and three in the four e and. I think there's too much of a problem with that seven five. Sometimes just hitting that zero part. Seven, eight. 
need to be. Now, I don't think he planned any of those mutes. They just happened to happen. Happened to happen? Yeah, that's the right way to say that. So it, it's like... <laughs> I don't know, it's like a mistake in a movie and we're trying to put it in on purpose. So you try to play, again, you try to play the approximation of the song. Good. Let's do this measure. And then I think before I get too much farther along, I have to start putting stuff together. Otherwise, I'm going to know like pockets of measures and not how to actually play the song. Two E and three and a four E and and a four E and I guess let's just learn it all and then we'll put it back together because a lot of this is playing the same idea right yeah so one and so also thinking of it as downs and ups down up down up Too. A long time no chat, and I'm actually playing guitar, my bro. My guy. My guy, my bro. What's new in your world, man? I'm doing Blackbird, if you couldn't tell. Oops. 
So we're not. <laughs> Thanks, bro. The beard is getting long. Trimmed it the other day. Going mountain man, I guess. Yeah, do some more of that. Thomas, let's you know. Let me know what you're working on. What's new in your world? seven sus four uh, weird thing in this song too is like we're never playing a full chord right he's just playing it's a hard one to teach kids um like like i'm not thinking of a7 at all i'm thinking about just this note so it's kind of cool how he does that um another cool interview i think I think Art of Guitar linked this one. It was like on some British TV show and he was breaking it all down and talking about how he stole it from a classical song. So it was kind of cool stuff. What's Black Creek? I don't know that song. Is it probably country? You probably could guess that. Um, all right, let's do that D7 G measure a minute while Thomas answers me. Okay, I can look it up. I'll, I'll check it out. I've been having to do a ton of songs for um, students of mine. So I was working on drums for Head Over Heels by Tears for Fears and then Blackbird, Somebody's Learning. And this is kind of on my bucket list to actually like get down perfect as well. I taught it wrong and, and like, okay, many years, but it's like John, who does all our sheet music, wrote it out the right way that he plays it and all the notes and all that. I thought this would be a really good open mic night song. So students learning it, it's a good time for me to learn it as well. Um, so on that D7 sus4, we're leaving the fifth string for like the first time in a while and going to the fourth string. Something like that. All right, let's do the D7 sus4 again. Strum gets me though. Four E and four E and one and a one and a two E and yeah one and a two E and three and a four E and and three and a four. section we're gonna try to put that all together and see how I do it'll be interesting so and again these are all all these third strings are gonna be that pick strumming down with our, our, our pick our thumbnail our fingernail man end of my night also Thomas it's 151 I think where you're at you're up a little late too So the C to G, I don't think is a problem. That A7 right here.
And the good thing is, it's really only the chorus that's different than, I think the verses just kind of repeat that idea throughout. too hard three I always say that and then I screw it up but okay that is the verse I say we start putting this together so we'll do these first three measures of the verse and go from there. those jumps in context because I feel like I'm going to have to look down and and lose my spot in the music and all that. One and two and three and four and so let's just do the jumps. And this is a uh, 44 BPM, which is pretty slow. Some of those mistakes I'm going to forgive myself on, right? Like, I'm just learning it, just figuring this out. All right, we're going to add this measure on. Just going to try to keep doing this. Zoom out just a little bit so we can see everything that we're doing. struggle though from seven eight and you hear that I'm not playing a muic where that X is but I'm trying my best as I get comfortable with it I can add some of those things in there. three and four Thank you. 
just getting a new technique down, right? Even though it might be quote unquote simplified, I don't really think it is. Like just getting that finger to move. All right, so we're just gonna add in one measure every time. So let's try by ourselves again. Screwed that up. Forgive some of those notes. Right, it's just walking down. But I have a bad memory. I kind of feel like we should just add that next measure too. Yeah, let's try it. So we got. Okay. See what we do. Uh, I'm sure you guys can't see all of that, and it's getting smaller. So I apologize for it, but. You can watch the other live stream if you want, or you can download the sheet music and help support us. And two, and three, and four, and uh, two, and three, and four, and I missed it. All right, let's play it once without. Take it from that five seven, the two four measure. I know I made a big deal about these mutes not being that important, but when you hit them, it sounds like I'm like, yeah, I played it how it's written. Just these, these amount. down at my guitar sorry I'm talking to the chat even though nobody's chatting right now um, it's frustrating right like because I want to look down but I'm trying to read my sheet music at the same time and it's throwing me off so it's knowing the space and getting that memorized as well by the time I look down there it's enough to throw me off and not get to that five seven There's some that are like five, seven, six, five, seven, eight. Check. 
chat, chat, chat. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing? How are you doing tonight? Now I'm distracted. We'll start over. Brandon, how many times have you had somebody request this song? I know it's, it's a very popular finger picking one. Or it's maybe like a, hey, you guys should learn finger picking. This is a great song. And then uh, the, the newest version that John wrote out for us is, is a little bit detailed. going I'm trying to get this chord moving now good stuff all right let's let's try to put let's put that last measure in there too so we got some of my best friends dislike okay wait wait guess why that's the best sounding 57 ever what do you think that's running through I'm Awaiting a response. All right, so I'm going to add that while, while I'm waiting for Brand to, to, to figure out why, uh, what I'm using to make that 57 sound so good. It's actually part of the fun about doing these lives. Um, it's just ch talking shit as we practice, because I feel like, you know, when you're in a band, that's kind of the situation as well. You kind of hang out and talk to each other. And... Uh, Never. Never gonna guess what the. Oh no no no! Cloudlifter. Cloudlifter makes those fifty-seven sound gorgeous. with Brandon chatting and, and me kind of just stumbling my way through it. It's just kind of a relaxed Saturday. And maybe that's the goal of these in the future is just a chill run through, learn the song. Hopefully somebody else is learning the song at the same time. All right, so add those in with metronome. But yeah, that cloud lifter is a huge difference maker if you, Brandon and I are chatting about. We're checking out for 57s and actually the SM7B I run through the cloud lifter as well.
this movement and then finish this out and then try to put this all together. Got you, bro. Um, I actually have upstairs. So Brandon said, I'm not gonna be able to see all that chat. Um, SM 81s are the need I have for it. I don't know if I know. I forget what the 81 is. I might, might have to look at that. Never would I have considered the 57 just because my pre's are only at 20 dB when I use them rather than the 60 dB I need when I run the 81. I got you. I think, no, I don't have an 81 upstairs. I got to check out the 81. I got to see why why you like them and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it really does open up the sound. Now, I always like the SM7B, like hands down, like there's um, that my AC30 upstairs has the has a 57 on it, cloud lifter, because I think I have four channels in the cloud lifter and a blah, blah, blah. Um, and I always run this through it. Now, the SM7B always, always, always sounds great. Oh yeah, I remember I remember that small condenser, um, the SM81. This will always, the SM7B, there's too many microphone names, always sounds the best, the best. But uh, sometimes you don't always need the best sound. You don't want every tone to be the same. So upstairs right now, this is set up. Also, I need two of these. I will bum it sometime. I'm trying to start getting back into recording and getting my shit together. All right, so we're gonna take it from this. That G slash B doesn't move. Just those three measures. Uh -oh. Brand knows me well enough. I'm always trying to get my life together. <laughs> it's weird too how that G. I don't know. I did that, but the G slash B kind of like feels like it slows down after this. These sixteenth notes. me in because the two doesn't do that so it's one and two e and three and four e and turn all of that see you monday bro have a good weekend took a little little break All right, let's do um, everything till the A7 just to solidify.
for whatever reason, that A7 measure gets me. Probably because I'm having to strum all the way to that second string. All right, so let's do just those two measures. Uh, we'll take it from here, just so I have context. Tie ourselves again. So we got one and two and three and a four and two four two four to four four. So I did that wrong. So I probably can't zoom out enough to look at that all at once. All right, we're at 44. Let's put that in our verse. I, I guess I'm just gonna see we have to see where the break is because I'd like to do this whole intro. Actually, I guess I can delete that. Let's do a pickup measure all the time and then hopefully we can get a nice transition and I can do this whole thing at once. We'll see. We'll see. So, just run through it by ourselves. So, we got this one and two. Trying to talk about it at the same time. There's certain, there's gonna be some little hiccups as I try to run through this all. So give me a little grace. And then having to know, kind of have the idea of what comes next, right? So that A7 measure rhythmically gets me off because usually, yeah, throws me off. So this is the G slash B and then to the B7 sus4. And the rhythm kind of changes to one and the two E. Can't see what's next. All right, we're just gonna try it, sight read it. So if you guys are on the vertical stream, it's gonna be a little hard to see every once in a while, but just do your best if you're playing along or if you're just chilling. Other than that metronome, it's probably like relaxing music to just uh, fall asleep to.
so uh, there's some clerical errors, right? Especially the fact that um, I don't remember. Where do we go? Where do we go? I think it's the C to the C minor where we go. I don't remember that rhythm. I don't remember what's next all the time, so it's... So I just have to remember that as we go through. Because I'm kind of seeing on the screen what you guys are seeing for the most part. Not the whole, not the whole song. So 48. That's going way quicker than I thought it would be. I thought learning this new technique would like take me forever. yet it starts to get in your fingers and it becomes easy but it did take us an hour it took me i hope you guys are playing too but it took me an hour right to get to the point where i had that all advantages that i've had as i've taught this a ton um i've taught it wrong every single time i did not have the detailed tab that john wrote out for us it's really gorgeous 
so that's a huge advantage. Disadvantages are there's just like all the nuances, all the small little hits he does. And I think for, for the most part, I'm getting like 90% of them. Every once in a while, there's like one that I don't get like the right zero in, or I, you know, the mutes are happening, but all right. 52. <laughs> start to hear it right like as soon as you get up to tempo i mean 52 is far away from tempo but it starts to sound like the song versus just like a bunch of random exercises put together all right 56 bpm i say we just take this as far as we can go we're about an hour and 10 minutes in but uh i'm having fun so hopefully you guys are having fun hopefully you guys are learning this song it's a challenging one as you can tell three four speed's 90 so i feel like we're not that far away i mean it 60 to 95 sounds like a mile away but it really isn't just solidifying these techniques and you get there three four and <laughs>
feel like I'm playing, um, shoot, I think it's these two measures a little sloppy. Let me them a little bit now and then fix them again later. through it once by ourselves. Let's do 64 a couple more times, and then I think we're going to be done. It's kind of how I'm feeling it. huge amount of slap. All right, so to do this well, let's go back to, let's go 58. Let's just tackle these measures that I get confused, confused on. So really, I feel like I could start here. It's this G, excuse me, the G flat A7, and then this, I just get a little bit wonky on that rhythm. See if I can do those all in context. Again. 
that D7 a lot. It throws me off, though. Because I got that da 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 on the G. It's like the only time I do that. It's always good to zone in on things. string he's hitting with that finger now that first finger that a7 let's do that a couple times and again a lot of this is get as close as you can all right i feel like the g G slash B and A7 are good. The D7 sus4 is fine. It's that A7 now to D7 sus4. All right. Yeah, I think we just do the whole thing again. I think we go back up. Let's go to uh, let's try 68. Full speed again, I think, is 95. I should probably write that down in the future. One, two, three, four. But smile because I'm making a bunch of mistakes there. Those those two measures that I suck at are just gonna be sloppy until I fix them. So I have to like deal with that myself. They're just different enough that it throws me off to play it that way. All right, let's do it one one to four more times. Oops. Two, three. Four. while we're here we're about an hour and a half in um we might as well look at that chorus a minute get that into our fingers and then call it a night so in my mind it's a little bit more straightforward and there's still a couple ideas from the other section but let's go back to like 
50 BPM or 48. So you have this eight in. It's, it's similar enough to the measures that I'm bad at on the verse, so it's kind of nice. Like, it'll reinforce those ideas. there a good night um if you guys want this sheet music or want to support us like comment subscribe all that good stuff but if you want sheet music if you're a sheet music learner or want to support us making more videos and actually give us input on what videos you want become a member at musicbythemeasurespro.com thank you guys for checking us out and you guys have a good rest of your night <laughs>